Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Fellowship in Essential Oils. I'm back, back, back after a bit of a gallivant around America. And thank you so much to Laurie, Candace, Felicity and Francis who did two episodes. And you, Liz, you held the fort well and even did the introductions beautifully while I was gone. Ah, oh, but I missed you. <laughs> I mean, I had some fantastic conversations, didn't I? And it was so lovely to you share. You really space did. And I must admit, I'm, you know, traveling, we know whenever we go traveling, it can be expensive. But listening to the five episodes that you did without me is going to be expensive as well because now there's more essential oils, more absolutes, and more books that I need to go buy. <laughs> and it's not the same without you. I've got to say, it was not the same without you. So I'm so glad to have you back. Oh, bless, bless. And we're going to do a really interesting essential oil, one that I use quite regularly, but probably not one in your calibre. We're going to explore blue tansy today. Yeah, so I have to say it's not an oil I know well. In fact, when you said to me, let's do blue tansy, I was like, I don't think I've ever used it. And then I found, which worries me because I noticed at the price tag of blue tansy, I was like, when have I bought that and forgotten that I bought that? I have, like, I know how to use it, but it's one I forget that I even have. So I'm really interested to know why you're so excited by it. Yeah. So let's dive in a little bit. Now, first of all, what's really interesting about it, Blue tansy. Why is it called blue tansy? It's a yellow flowered plant. But when we steam distill it, what happens is we get the most beautiful royal blue colour. And I absolutely love it. And, you know, there are other oils that go blue, yarrow, German or blue chamomile is really good. But I must say probably this one would be the bluest of the blue. And it's got that really beautiful rich colour. And hence why it's called blue tansy essential oil. What... One place that it became really in my, I'd, I was already aware of it, I was already using it, but somewhere where I found that it was really, really popular was when I did my little stint of 18 months in the Middle East. In countries, especially Morocco, a lot of people were talking about this powder, this magical powder that was, you had to have it for your skincare and they're putting in all different recipes and moisturizers and different things like that. And then I realised what they were actually doing is they were simply powdering the blue tansy extract. Um, but but why, why get the powder when you can get the essential oil? And, and that's where I use this from a proactive level. In skincare, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I mean, so so much to unpack from there because, yeah, quite, it is really well loved in Morocco. And sometimes it's called Moroccan wild chamomile rather than wild uh, than than tansy. It's called Moroccan wild chamomile, but there is also a Moroccan chamomile oil, which is not this one. <laughs> so, so when I talk about chamomile Maroc, is what I call it, Moroccan chamomile. Uh, chamomile that's all mainis multicolis var mixta. Whereas this is a different uh, different plant completely. And I think you kind of glossed over a little bit that. The yellowness, I mean, it's, well, actually, so it's as yellow as you can see in that lamp, isn't it? It's like sunflower yellow, really bright, bright yellow. So it's like, how does that turn into this colour blue oil in distillation? Well, it's absolutely fascinating. Of course, that's the alchemy of the azulines coming through. And the azulines is a really important class. And I was fascinated to uh, to read about. There's an. Did you know there was an azuline toadstool mushroom? Bright, bright, no, bright. I heard of that. Bright, bright, bright blue. That in, in Mexico, it's like quite a uh, quite a like um, a magical plant, but it, it's completely this blue. So the mushroom itself is this blue, but but normally azuline forms from the heat of distillation and just phenomenal when you compare the color of that yellow plant out on earth where was that hidden is a really interesting where's the, there's the magic there's the hiding in the mystery but then we got another kind of difficulty in the naming because i talked about how it's like it is wild moroccan caramel but also blue tansy there is another essential oil called tansy oil which mm. is a hazardous oil um, and so we don't want to mix those up. So we have to be very, very careful, but we are getting the right oil with this one. Mm. 
So what what I love about this blue is is and the properties of it, so so calming for the skin. So really really great for. I will just pop one drop in with my nighttime moisturizer, and I do that once or twice a week. Um, I will say a word of warning because of that rich blue color. It can take up to half an hour to absorb into your skin. So probably best to leave this for your evening skincare regime rather than your morning skincare regime because otherwise you may be going out into the world looking a bit like a smurf. But it extends beyond that just kind of beauty and, and caring for your skin. I find it absolutely amazing and so many people have found it really, really amazing for um, really when skin is irritated, when it's really itchy. So, you know, things like I've had a journey with eczema in my life and I've found things like lavender, frankincense, tea tree to be nice for kind of soothing. But when it gets to that point where there's any kind of skin where it's really itchy and irritating and like almost, um, you know, it, it feels like it's on fire and there's a hot lot of heat on it, mixing that with, you know, diluting that down, putting it in a carrier and popping on that skin can be really, really quite nice. Now, not only on the skin, but it, I do find in other parts of the body, it can be really quite calming as well. Uh, people have found it to be helpful rubbed on the chest for things like asthma uh, and on, um, on the gut for helping with a bit of digestion. But where it's often used in blends and a co couple of blends that I use quite regularly is actually when it comes to pain. So this may be muscular pain and like pain from exercising, but really for rheumatic, rheum, uh, rheumatic arthritis um, or even fibromyalgia pain, this can be a really quite soothing one as well. So that's another kind of use of whenever the body seems to be irritated or inflamed or on edge, I find this is such a beautiful oil to bring in and use topically in that way. Yeah, I think, I think that that was really beautifully put. I think that... Um sort of two ways that I would speak to that is the first is anything that has azulene at the end of it consider it to be a liquid anesthetic so uh, like a local anesthetic so actually just saying it out loud I realized I missed an opportunity to use it for a friend of mine who is using a CPAP machine because he has sleep apnea and a he's getting very anxious about the fact that he has to put it onto his face but b it's causing a lot of itching where it it, it, it sits so an azulene based oil i i'd said um blue chamomile same thing but th this would be an option uh will sort of anesthetize the skin so you don't have the itching. So as you quite rightly say, if you've got very sore eczema, very reactive eczema, um, any kind of situations where there is a reaction, then you would use an azulene-based oil. So if you put that into the context of um, Ayurveda, and they talk about the different doshas, Azulene based oils work extremely good for people who have pitta dosha uh, problems or, or a predominant pitta dosha. So if you were to look in a book about um, Ayurveda and you wanted a picture of somebody who is pitta dosha, <laughs> there you are. Red hair, very pale skin, volatile temper, very sharp tongued, quick thinker. That's just I am just it. It's very rare that somebody is completely one, but I most definitely am. Although I am getting more towards Cappadocia, where I'm getting fatter and slower and <laughs> sluggish and all of those things. But Pitta Dosha. So and, and Pitta Dosha is personified by water on fire. So if you think about uh, in the in the eighties, we were taught don't throw water onto a chip pan because oil on hot water explodes, and that is the personification of a, a pitta dosha crisis. That you have this reaction, this aggravation, this vicious, volatile situation. So whether that comes through the the personality, I can be very volatile. Um, I can have very sharp tongue, quite spiteful tongue when I want to be, um, but also very fast thinking. Or you could have like a, a volatile situation within the body. So very hot, reactive skin, very hot, reactive diarrhea, 
you know, that wateriness coming through the, the body in the same way cystitis, interstitial cystitis or normal cystitis, urinary tract infections where it's like it burns to do that. You know, this kind of, oh, my goodness, there's a sensation of burning. Always go for an azuline-based oil to cool it down. And what's interesting, of course, is these azuline-based oils all have azuline, which is blue. So you'll get, as you say, uh, like blue chamomile or German chamomile. Um, also, yarrow is the same. We all, we can use them all. They're sort of all uh, can be used in the same way. Um, but so this, so then we we wonder. Well, and I I always wonder particularly with uh, German chamomile oil in, in yarrow, how did that white plant, why does it turn blue? And all right, we can talk about it from the scientific chemistry point of view or somebody else can, I couldn't explain it, but somebody else can. Um, but but, um, but also from a, from a mystical point of view, then to me it says that's not operating like a yellow pan, a plant spiritually and uh from a point of view of what we would say was solar plexus or, or sun medicine, it's channeling a different frequency, a blue frequency. And the blue frequency is soothing. <laughs> it's mm. serenity. It's calming. It's cooling. It's trickling water. Of course, water is blue in its best and most pure form. We were all actually, that would be clear, but we would want to see clear blue waters, oddly. Uh, it's because that's reflecting the purity of the sky rather than grey waters reflecting clouds. So the purity of the blue and from a, a like a, a spiritual kind of deity point of view, what it's channeling is Mother Mary energy. So that beautiful, soothing mother. Oh, come on now. Come on. It's going to be OK. Just calm, rocking, you know, completely beautiful, pure blue energy. Yeah, yeah. And and that's what I've found that this not only for the body, but as we go into that emotional realm, it is really great in anxiety blends, in stress blends, and that just to I guess it's probably the, the counteractor, like you said, to that fire energy of just calming whatever may may be down in that way. Um, as we step into that blue energy as well, and it is a rich blue, it's almost uh, you know, could we could argue is should it be called blue tansy or should it maybe be called indigo tansy? It's that real royal cobalt kind of colour. Um, one of the key components I find that this is a really beautiful oil when it comes to dreams. And I'm not necessarily talking about the dreams we have at night, but more so the dreams we have during the day. And think about when we were as children, you know, you'd ask, you ask a six-year-old, what do you want to be when you grow up? And we have these wild and, you know, imaginative dreams of where we want to be when we're older. But as we start to get into adulthood, we start having to be sensible and adult-like and we almost kind of abandon our dream and stop ourselves from dreaming or thinking of um, what would I like to be or what, what, what could I possibly be? And we just kind of accept our lot in life and get into that kind of day-by-day -day drudgery and we get to the end of our lives where we're like, oh, this is a bit dull or I'm getting a bit bored with life or I'm get, getting a bit bored in the situation I've found myself in. And I find blue tans is a really beautiful one for kind of creating this um, space in your life to dream again, of to almost ask the question, what if? And one thing I love to do with essential oils is I love to look at when people hate the aroma. And I've got... Few, few different stories in my head of different oils that people have smelt. Cilantro is one, um, spike nards another. And, and there's one individual in particular I knew who hated blue tansy. Now, she grew up in a rather wealthy family and she also married a rather wealthy man. And she had been successful in her life, in her pursuits. But as I looked at kind of behind the curtain a little bit more, I kind of saw that this was an individual who throughout her whole life, because she had been in a higher socioeconomic family, had always had this pressure of this is what I need to achieve and this is who I need to be and this is where I need to kind of get myself to. And, yes, yeah, she had a beautiful house that overlooked the ocean, two lovely kids, lovely car, all those types of things. Some may say she's living the dream, but... I don't think she'd ever been given space in her life to kind of go, well, what if I didn't want to do that? And what if I wanted to do that? So 
anyone who smells blue tansy, and I, I, I don't know about you, Liz, but I don't find the aroma one that I'm craving or gagging for. But it's a really no. I really like it. You really like I really, it. Huh? Really, really, really like it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I find it smells like cooking flat, like but flour, as in what we'd cook with flour, kind of thing, almost. But yeah, I think it's a really great one for creating space in your life, um, for allowing us as adults to dream again. Yeah, well, maybe it is because I am a cook, specifically a baker. So then maybe it is what that is what it's speaking to. Um, like I say, it's not one that I can say is in my wheelhouse to have used extensively. But I think I'm going to talk on a more global uh, point of view from the mystical aspect of essential oils. Uh, because, no, I'm going to speak one more thing on the on the physical before I do that. Untie it in. So, so one of the things that we know that camasuline can do is a lot of clinical evidence into protecting the mitochondria of the heart after a heart attack, uh, and that it won't be so damaged afterwards. Uh, and I think that um, so, so that is an interesting piece of medicine where that fits. Who knows? Um, but I, I think from a spiritual point of view, it speaks to a lot of things about essential oils and, and perhaps informs something about this one. So I think that when you're doing sort of mystical work with essential oils, as opposed to slightly different to spiritual work or magical work, where you're actually kind of trying to peel away the layers of like a, of yourself, like an onion, trying to understand what's going on with me. You, you can almost use it a bit like CBT, whereas CBT kind of goes, well, what if this happened? What would you do? And you look at your response and go, wait, wait what? How did I get? Why would I think that? Why would I think that? And there's somewhere in that space that goes something in your past created this inv this response that you go there. So actually, so I'll, I'll reveal something about myself. I had to go to have CBT after I came out of an extremely abusive relationship. And I was having, like, funnily enough, daydreams about killing myself. Uh, I'd see myself cutting my wrists and just watch the blood falling out for a long, long time. And so the doctor, in his wisdom, went, you are going to counselling now and just got me past all of the cues of waiting, uh, waiting this and what have you. And one of the things that, the questions that she asked me has stayed with me forever because it was so unrelated to what I saw as what had happened with the abuse. But actually, as a, as a grown up looking back now, I can see why she asked it. She said, if you walk along the if you walked along the road and you saw somebody from school across the road, what would you do? So my answer was, well, I'd look down and I'd walk past because they probably wouldn't even remember me anyway. Uh, and what was really interesting was we did actually subsequently about three years ago have a school reunion of which I was talked into helping to organize it. And we got 60 people there and there wasn't a single person in that room that didn't remember me. And so so that so that was a very, very to me, that was like a, a big learning thing that 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 thought process was very, very wrong. And how did I get there? And of course, how I got there was the very low self-esteem from the abuse. But that was not in that conversation. You don't, uh, you know, it, it wasn't even investigated. And I think when we're looking at essential oils from that point of view, you're looking in that hole. What happened in that hole? What, what are we doing? What made you go to that place? Um, and I think speaking to uh, to the to the physical medicine, that wounding of the heart it, it is quite profound. Well, well, what wounded my heart, and and what do we do about that now? Because that that's a psychological wound, and a and a spiritual wound, and a mystical wound, as well as just being a physical wound. It doesn't just affect your ability to to like move circulation through your body. Uh, it affects lots of things, and likewise, actually, camasuline can help to reduce blood pressure and uh, and pulse speed so again we're speaking to that heart and again if color therapy would use blue to do that so we have that sort of situation of well what happened with that wounding of the heart 
right? So if we choose an oil to go with, depending on what your forte of using is, mine is definitely not blue tansy, maybe yours is, I would use yarrow, you know, the, the wounded healer, but that, that blue is very helpful for, for addressing that space. What happened in that gap? Mm. I'm wondering whether the arrow would be really great for helping to heal that wound, but maybe blue tansy steps in after that because if you think about it, you know, anything heartbreaking that happened to us, let's say a separation, it's really, really hard to see out of that hole. Like how many times we've all broken up with someone who we were convinced was the love of our lives and the best person we could ever possibly be with. And at that time, we don't have the ability to dream. We're not, we're often not like, oh, oh, that's sad, but I'm sure there's someone better out there. You know, like how many, you know, I, I know I've counselled many people throughout my years of like, I think that person was the one and, and give it a year. And they're like, thank God, <laughs> they're not the one <laughs> type of thing. So maybe they, like, they, they, there may be a layering in there. And I'm wondering, maybe it's the arrow goes in first, maybe German chamomile comes in second. I do find it quite a wise oil German that and then maybe blue tangy comes in third with that ability to kind of go, okay, that now we've logically worked out of it, and what, 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 what's next in that way? I wonder if we could use them as a trio. I mean, sort of making it up as we go along, really. If you think that the, the like the kind of I don't know if it's the next significant co uh, constituent or the third one, but but high up there is mercy. Mm -hmm. And myrcene is what gives you couch lock when you're when you you're doing cannabis, you know. You just sit on the settee and dream. That's what you do. That's myrcene does that. So uh, so yeah, that kind of like shifting out of the 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 space of reality and kind of going, there's something else outside of this experience, whether that be the experience of this breakup or whatever, but something else excite outside of that experience, I can go there and look at that. And and cannabis, of course, is tremendously good at doing that. Uh, but but not everybody wants to go down that route. And yeah, I think this is a, a good uh, sort of herb flower that has a good amount of mercy in which we know scientifically that's what that does, amongst other things. Interesting in, in saying that, because within the doTERRA community, there's a really popular thing called the Blue Tansy 30-Day Challenge. And all you do is you get a drop of Blue Tansy each day and put one drop on each of your big toes. And what a lot of people have found, um, and I don't have the reasoning behind it. I, do, I don't know where it came from. I, I, I haven't been able to get to the, the root of it. But what people have found is that they become more focused and they actually, it, they actually start to stop procrastinating and they start performing better in life in this type of way. Now, obviously, the big toe is linked directly to the, the head and the brain. And that's why we're putting it on there type of thing. But it's really interesting that people, countless people around the world have found that putting a drop of blue tansy on each big toe seems to get get their act together. Well, interestingly, uh, from a, a point of view of safety, I would challenge that. Okay. Um, because it does interact with one particular um, it, it does interact with one particular in enzyme in the body, which also interacts with a lot of drugs. And it's interesting in this context of this uh, of this conversation as to what kind of drugs. So blue tansy. Um, so, by the way, thank you to Tissa and Young for this information. We've got it from the Essential Oil for Safety Prof uh, Professionals book. That blue tansy is metabolized by an enzyme called CYP2D6. Now, what's a little worrying about loads of people putting it on, on their feet without thinking about it too much and perhaps not diluting it is that loads and loads of drugs also work on that particular enzyme. Um, and when you think about what these drugs do, it's quite interesting. You can't quite marry it up and say this equals this, but it's interesting to, to where we just went. And, it, and, I, and I should stress, actually, that, that we don't have this conversation before we come onto camera. We kind of find our way there. So uh, but unless you've actually looked this up, you, I can't see you would have got to the same place. So for a start off, a CYP2D6 uh, has 
uh, is what's called polymorphic, which means it can be made up in many, many different ways from many different alleles. And to rep to understand that, replace the word alleles with DNA strands. So, so lots of different people, so also lots of people have different sort of mutations of this particular um, enzyme. And the kind of drugs that work on this enzyme, for the most part, are um, antipsychotics um, and antidepressants, but lots of other things. So, for example, the the main antipsychotic, yeah, particularly in the UK, I think probably in in the, in the states that is used, is a drug called um, amipriprazole, um, and or amipriprazole. I always say it wrong, um, and. If I remember rightly, I read somewhere that one in 16 people takes this drug. So I, I, I need a lot. And, and actually going off the subject, one of my gripes is that there's no uh, actual evidence and literature of how somebody actually comes off this drug. So, mm -hmm. so, so that's scary. But um, so imagine that you are taking an antipsychotic and that might be because you're having psychosis, but it might also be because you have mood disorder or problems with reality, but also antidepressant, anxiety. It's taken for lots of different things. If you're taking that and you're putting uh, using blue tansy, then that potentially screws the amount of drugs that is being moved around your body. So that can really affect psychosis. It can really affect uh, depression to the point of suicide and also to the point of anxiety so what I would always say is tr try to to get into the habit of diluting this oil and really think about it. if you're like in a position where you're selling it or using it on a patient you need to be investigating what drugs they're taking some pharmaceuticals they're taking so particularly antipsychotics particularly antidepressants beta blockers um, also it affects also affects opioids uh, so people who are taking things like codeine tramadol that will screw that medication up um, so I mean and if you think about it it's kind of a bit obvious when we've talked about how we use it for pain somebody potentially is already using something for pain uh, so mm. we really have to be careful that we don't have that sort of um, overlap less likely uh for you to to be aware of but also relevant anti-malarial tablets so if somebody is going abroad uh to somewhere where there might be malaria that screws that over anti-cancer meds i mean this is an oil that is very very calming very very soothing i perhaps would have thought of using it for somebody who has pain and distress from um from cancer treatments but it interacts with tamoxifen um and also there are some genes uh, gene disorder therapies which would be more obscure but but the important thing to say is if you are going to use this and you need to have a look at medications that you're taking and the salient one to be aware of is cyp2d6 and as i say thank you to young for that information um so that's a lot of people. That is a lot of people who could be using that. Um, and while on the other side of things, I would say it is a lovely safe oil. It's a lovely, gentle oil. Using it on the skin is certainly not going to irritate the skin. But once it gets into the system, then what else is working in there? Because that, that can be problematic. Mm, very much so. No, thank you very much for sharing that. And I think that's really important for people to realise that, yeah, an oil and a, a pharmaceutical might not look like they clash um, on, on you know, at first glance, but you've always got to look into that for, and be really, really clear on that for sure. And, and you know, with, with popping on the big toe, I'm a big advocate. Whenever you're putting anything on your – any oils on your skin, you've got to um, – you've you dilute it. Dilute it and you're going to – not, not only for safety of like irritating the skin, but you're going to get better absorption. You're going to get better value for money because the carrier oil does exactly what the name says. Is it carries it in as well, type of thing. So I think that's really. I, know, I, I, mean, I have to say, you know, with a teacher's head on, mm -hmm. then you should always dilute, right? Yeah. But I will be the first to admit that there are loads of oils that I whack on undiluted. 
But that is because I understand which, like, it's not old, it's not going to be uh, sensitizing, it's not phototoxic. There's a huge amount of database information that I can recall on that fast. And the reason why we say to people, always dilute it. Again, you're quite right. It, it improves. It does improve the efficacy of the oil, but it's, it is it is a protection against all of these things and so many things in one go. In particular, if you're putting that neat on and you've missed that you've got a drug, that is a huge amount of screwing over of your medication that you're going to do. And and I think from a from a, like a legal point of view, we would always say talk to your doctor before using essential oils. But practically, who who on earth does that? Because I sure as hell don't. And I'm sure my doctor would be very annoyed if if I kept ringing up and saying I've got a new essential oil, can I use it? But the reason that we do say that is because there are matters in your health that will be affected positively but also negatively if, um, by the essential oil if you're not careful and particularly with this one there are a lot of ways and in the same way that there's lots of other oils for example let's use clove for example that if you're already using blood thinners then that's problematic so they're small they seem small but if you know there are lots of and if that happened and if that happened and if that happened then that could happen and they are bad. They are that bad. And this one in particular with antipsychotics and antidepressants, this is a bad one. Yeah. One one, th- one other thing about what while we're off on this tangent about diluting as well is I have found several people where they've been a bit kind of relaxed with their with their diluting, and they're like, "Oh no, I can put oils on straight all the time. I've got tough skin and that kind of thing," and they're fine for a certain period of time. It may be days, months, even years. And then one day, their skin just goes no more. And any oil going on them, diluted or not, comes up. And the analogy I use, definitely not scientific analogy, but it's like you can yell at your skin by putting it on that many times, but one day your skin's just going to go enough is enough and, and it kicks the shit. So that's why I'm another big fan of always diluting as well, just to stop that kind of thing happening because people can get a bit... Yeah, occasionally I throw some frankincense on myself directly or if I burn myself in the kitchen, lavender, I'm not diluting the lavender, it's going straight on. But as a general rule, dilute your oils. Yeah, I mean, I, that, that's absolutely right what you said. And I have to say that my, my youngest has started laughing at something that I say because it's a bit like 50% chance of rain, you know. Of course, people get paid to say it's 50% chance of rain, it might rain or it not. But but I go, but I quite often say, well, it it works till it doesn't or and in this case it's it's uh, you're absolutely right that that will often happen to people that that it, it it's fine on their skin until it isn't and the problem that you face is once your skin develops that kind of reaction then there is no going back with it exactly. so for so for me actually i am although i use lavender a lot i'm really quite sensitized to lavender um, so it will if if I'm in the room with it, it's gonna it gives me a headache, and there's no escape from that because I just in my early career worked with my mom, and we were producing products, and we were in the room with all the time with lavender, and my body got sensitized to it. So actually, my body got, will always go. I'd rather you didn't use lavender if possible, and that's a good tool not to be able to use. You know, so so this is almost like a protection mechanism to kind of go, when I'm ill, I do want to be able to use that. I do want to cancel that situation. And sooner or later, you're quite right. It doesn't matter how tough your skin is. It will soon go. And you're not supposed to do that. Stop doing it to me. I love that you shared that story, Liz, because that is just justified by reason for why I need to get more essential oils, because the more I mix and match and use the whole range, I don't keep using the same oil over and over again. I'm not going to become... the sensitize to it so i can continue to grow my my extensive collection the way you're going you're going to need a new house for all your oils <laughs> <laughs> yeah now let's jump back to blue tansy another aspect of blue tansy i really really like is i do find because of that kind of dreamy energy i like that you would use the word mystical before you know i love to pair a crystal with each essential oil this is celestite now celestite is renowned for helping us it's a very angelic realm kind of crystal it also helps us to always see the beauty in ourselves 
in a situation in life uh, in that type of way as well. And I th find that they work really well together, that this is a oil that kind of brings in that kind of um, those rose-coloured glasses and can be used, you know, a drop in the hand and inhaled in meditation can be a really great way of a bit of a conduit for accessing the angelic realms, whether you're working with a particular archangel that's kind of called out to you and you're drawn to or whether you just want to communicate with your your guardian angel, I find blue tansy can actually be used quite nicely for that as well. Um, well, yeah, when I was work, working with it earlier, I did think I wish I knew more about angels to be able to speak to that because I did think exactly the same thing. It feels like an angelic presence. Um, I would have said, and and I don't know enough angel about angels to be able to say if what I'm saying is correct. Uh, correct, but it felt to me like it it vibrated on the same sort of frequency as the archangel Metatron, and sort of he's and what you were saying earlier actually about being brought back to your pathway, your chosen pathway that you chose before you incarnated and being able to to bring you back that, to that and when you ask for help in that way. Um, but like I say, I don't know enough about Metatron to be able to say for sure, but that that was that was my feelings about it. Um, I, I've really been kind of trying to think about what planet, and I didn't really get an answer to that, because maybe because I don't know the oil. So I'm interested to know what you think about planetary rulership on this one. Yeah, well, I've, I've got a bit of a story and I've got a bit of a myth that will take us here. Um, and the myth is actually about Zeus and Ganymede. Now, Zeus, we know who Zeus is, but Ganymede was a beautiful young boy who Zeus ended up becoming a little bit infatuated with and decided, right, I might take you up to Olympus. And he's like, well, how do I keep this mortal, beautiful boy around? I'll make him my cupbearer. So Ganymede became the cupbearer, and basically his role was whenever the gods would feast, his job was especially to make sure that Zeus's cup was never empty and it was always filled with ambrosia. Now, of course, poor Hera, she kind of got wind of, hold on, Zeus is spending a lot of time with this Ganymede and started to get a little bit jealous. And she's like, I need to get rid of him. And so plotted his death. Zeus got wind of this. And so what he did is he, now, the myth, it's not necessarily this way in the Greek version, but in later kind of more Renaissance um, versions of the myth, it is actually said that um, Zeus gave Ganymede tansy. Now, probably when you were talking before about this tansy and this blue tansy, and we've got to be careful of the other tansy, it's neurotoxic, it's got food joined in that, that was probably what he gave Ganymede. But I, but they are related plants, so I kind of, I'm just like, I'm going to carry that myth over. So he gave Ganymede tansy, and that made him immortal. And he placed him in the sky as the zodiac sign Aquarius. So when I think about Aquarians always have that ability to dream, to think of what next, to be very innovative, to be very revolutionary. And when we've been talking about this idea that Blue Tans encourages us to dream and say, well, what if, and be very expansive, I actually find it ties in really nicely with the sign Aquarius. And so then you could tie it in with maybe Uranus, um, yes, you could argue it could be with Jupiter. Yes, you could argue it would definitely be a Neptune oil as well. But I primarily work with it as an Uranus oil because there aren't a lot of Uranus oils. And I'm like, I reckon that'll work. So it's a bit of a loose tie-in, but that, that, that's my justification anyway. So from a medicinal point of view, for it to be ruled by Uranus, because, as, as you know, I refuse to conform on this one, then that would be medical, that would be the electrical receptors of the body. So mm. I don't think that that would be correct. From my point of view, the way I see it, that's not to say your way is not correct. I wouldn't use it that way. It's a better way of saying it. My feeling was Neptune as well. Mm. Uh, and I was also thinking water bearer because of the blue so interesting that we got to um to aquarius what i would ask you then as a tarot reader surely he's the page of cups 
Could yeah, the Page of Cup could be. Yeah, it, if, it, he, if, he think, if he's the chalice holder, he must be the Page of Cups, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You could, but you could so, also argue it's almost, um, you know, in, in when we look at the tarot in the major arcana, there's a star card, which I would probably actually say blue tansy ties in better with the star card. There is that woman. She's naked. She's under the stars. She's pouring water. Um, she's she's living her best life and kind of dreaming about her best life. So, I I, I would probably tie blue tans in more with the star card, but it could also be yeah, the uh, the page so cups too. On the star, is she a human? Is she a human woman or a nymph? Do we think a water nymph? Uh, I would, if I had to put money on it, I'd pro I would probably say human. But I'd say um, human, I, I've never heard her referred to as a, as a nymph. But I would say that there would be no reason why she couldn't be a nymph. It's interesting, yeah. So what does I'm I'm very set on this idea of exploring Page of Cups. So what can you tell me about that card? Page of Cups. Um normally for me when the Page of Cups comes up, that, that can either represent it's it's a young, um, rather emotional youth. Um so a, a, it could be a young child that is either a Cancerian, Pisces, or Scorpio, or just someone who's quite sensitive. Um it can oh you're testing me now on what type of messages. Um it can sometimes be like long distance messages um, have come through, or that someone has um, there's been someone's received a message that has been quite emotional, like someone's made a um, admitted that they're in love or admitted that they're upset or something like that as well. It can represent that in that aspect. Right, so, so that is where I'm going to sit it. That is exactly where I'm going to sit it because that Cancerian energy is definitely the the maternal mother, isn't it? And the upset child. Uh, that's where I'm going to sit it. So I'll, from for me now, I'm going to go away and explore that more because that feels feels right to me. I'm going to look at two different interpretations now. Look at that and look at the star and see where we come out with. So thank uh -huh. you for for opening that up to me. What about chakras? Chakras for me, it's the third eye chakra. It, it's that ability to dream, that ability to you know imagine it open. It is a lovely one to actually when you are doing any third eye chakra work. Mix it with your moisturizer, you know, rub it all over your face because it's going to be great for the entire face. Very, very soothing and calming, as I said before. But really focus on that third eye chakra area and allow yourself to dream a little bit more. Yeah, I agree with that. Also, in terms of this action of the the camasuline on on the heart, I think and on circulation, mm. I think I would say heart chakra as well. But yeah, that seems right to me. It's brow chakra. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Now, I am intrigued now to go and learn more about this oil. Now, I, I, I must admit, as I would listen to each episode that you recorded while I was away, I, I was very flattered that you would ask my questions about the chakra, the astrology, and then you'd always finish off with, is this an oil that we need? So I'm going to twist the question this week. As you've started to look at it a little bit more, you've got a bottle of blue tansy, but is this an oil you feel that Liz needs in her collection? No. No. We I no. we convinced you. <laughs> and, 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 and well, so I don't think it's so I really want to speak to that actually, because I've been thinking about that a lot. I think from an intellectual point of view, there's too many other oils in my box that do similar things. I also I don't know what the status of this or, or this plant is, but I know sort of six years ago, one of the reasons I chose not to explore this plant was because you couldn't get it anywhere. You know, there's been a very bad crop year and um, uh, they just hadn't been able to to produce anywhere enough for the for the global demand. So to and that oil does not speak to me. That that's the spirit of that plant does not step out in front of me and say let's work together so to me it's more important that if that happens again then somebody who it is their plant totem can use it i shouldn't have it on my shelf doing nothing i've already got one of those bottles <laughs> to be <it. laughs> 
So, so from an intellectual point of view, no, I can say I've got plenty of other oils that do the same thing. There's nothing there that says to me, oh, I couldn't live without that. But from a from a like a spiritual point of view, a mystical point of view, go back to what I always say: it's just not one of my click. It's just not. It's not who I work. They're not one of my sort of plant allies, if you like. In my opinion, I think this is an oil that everyone should try once. I think when it comes to, the, especially if you're interested in essential oils for skincare and for beauty, I think that it does seem, some people have had some, like, notice profound effects in, in the soothing of their skin, the youthfulness of their skin, um, that type of thing. Um, I, I would say give it a shot. At least. If you've never had it, give it a shot once. Go work your way through a bottle. If you notice differences and you're kind of enjoying the benefits, then it belongs in your collection. But then if, you know, we've talked about many different health issues and things that it could help with, if it's not really popping your, you know, rocking your boat, then maybe it's not one you need to keep on replacing time and time again. That's kind of where I would sit yeah. with it. Yeah, I think from a medicinal point of view, if you ha if your body has shifted into that space where it's reacting to stuff, and that might be because of menopause or, you know, for, for because of infection. Then if that happened to me, I would be looking at oils that would that could deal, deal with that pitidosia issue. Now, like I say, I have several to do that. But if you don't because you are not of that natural disposition, then this would probably be a really interesting one to, to go with. Because I do I have seen people have profound effects on things like rosacea and like reactive eczema. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's good to be back. We'll be back next week when we dive into another amazing gift of Mother Nature. But until then, go get some blue tansy on and make yourself look like a Smurf. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Bless me. Bye-bye.